Hi everyone, so this is our first flowers video. Um, so this is the first uh, um, uh, work of fiction that we're going to be looking at. And in the second video, I'm going to talk you through some of the details of it, uh, thinking about the nature of the symbolism in greater detail. Uh, in this video, I'm mainly going to read it out um, to you. Of course, you could read it yourself, but it, I think it's useful sometimes uh, to hear it read um, and uh, um, that'll set you up for some of the things you need to look at in, this, in the uh, second video. Notice that in this annotated version, um, annotated is a word you'll learn later on, we'll talk about more even more later on, uh, but this is an annotated version of the story that got these notes out to the side and if you click on them you can see that they relate back to something in here. So this says the flowers, and I've got a note here talking about the flowers. I've got down here, um, it's you know hen house to pig house to smoke house. So that uh, that tells us something there. Um, sorry, we heard. I just got an email. Um, so uh, um, I've got these annotations here, uh, and so as you read through, you can see the kinds of things that you might be needing to pay attention to. I'll talk about those in detail when we get. To, uh, in the next video, uh, but I just want to let you know that they're there. Um, and I do actually want to call your attention to the first annotation here uh, for the title. Um, so the title of the, of the story is The Flowers. Um, and as I say here, titles are always an indication of what's important, right? Because it's this sense of this is the big thing that kind of holds the entire story together, right? Or a poem, anything that we have, the title is going to matter. Um, and as I say here, if and if the title refers to an ordinary object, then that object is probably a symbol. Okay, because we can think, all right, this is about the flowers. Well, why do flowers matter? Well, flowers are pretty, I guess, but why is this about the flowers? Well, if we say that the flowers are a metaphor, uh, then we can see how that's uh, a, a potentially bigger idea here, right? And so we might need to hold the flowers in our mind here and begin to think about, wait a minute, in what ways might the flowers be used as a symbol here? Um, and so uh, um, keep that in mind with all kinds of stories that you're reading. I mean, and you know, television shows that you watch. It's important that I, you know, in the uh, uh, discussions that I had, I had you bring up, you know, movies or TV shows that you like because they function really in the same way. Um, uh, um, symbols are going to be important in them as well, and so it can help you on some level just understand the, you know, the entertainment that you look at. You may not realize that there might be some deeper things going on there, different ways that you can begin to think about that um, by using some of the stuff that we're talking about here. Um, so as, if I say the title refers to an ordinary object, then an object is probably a symbol. That's because flowers by themselves are not that important. I mean, they're important to, you know, helping the plants grow. Uh, but, you know, in terms of our lives, you know, what the kinds of things that we might be doing are not usually that important to us. Um, what is important is the meaning we put onto them, such as the meanings we put on flowers for Valentine's Day or funerals, right? So we use flowers at those particular times to say something. Uh, they are expressions of certain kinds of emotions that we might have. And so uh, um, uh, so it's important that we understand uh, uh, that we understand them in that way. And so on Valentine's Day and funerals, we're using flowers as a particular kind of a symbol to express something. And we can say the same kind of thing here, that we are using the flowers here to tell us something important. So as I read through the story, kind of keep that in mind. Again, in the next video, we'll look at the other annotations that we have down here. So I'll go ahead and read it. The Flowers by Alice Walker. It seemed to Mayop as she skipped lightly from hen house to pig house to smoke house that the days had never been as beautiful as these. The air held a keenness that made her nose twitch. The harvesting of the corn and cotton, peanuts and squash made each day a golden surprise that caused excited little tremors to run up her jaw. Mayop carried a short, knobby stick. She struck out at random at chickens she liked and worked out the beat of a song on the fence around the pig pen. She felt light and good in the warm sun. She was ten, and nothing existed for her but her song, the stick clutched in her dark brown hand, and the tat -de -ta, ta of accompaniment. Turning her back on the rusty boards of her family's sharecropper cabin, Mayop walked along the fence till it ran into the stream made by the spring. Around the spring, where the family got drinking water, silver ferns and wildflowers grew. Along the shallow banks, pigs rooted. 
Mayup watched the tiny white bubbles disrupt the thin black scale of soil and the water that silently rose and slid away down the stream. She had, she had explored the woods behind the house many times. Often in late autumn, her mother took her to gather nuts among the fallen leaves. Today she made her own path, bouncing this way and that way, vaguely keeping an eye out for snakes. She found, in addition to various common but pretty ferns and leaves, an armful of strange blue flowers with velvety ridges and a, a sweet suds bush full of the brown fragrant buds. By twelve o'clock, her arms laden with sprigs of her findings, she was a mile or more from home. She had often been as far before, but the strangeness of the land made it not as pleasant as her usual haunts. It seemed gloomy in the little cove in which she found herself. The air was damp, the silence close and deep. Maya began to circle back to the house, back to the peacefulness of the morning. It was then she stepped smack into his eyes. Her heel became lodged in the broken ridge between brow and nose, and she reached down quickly, unafraid to free herself. It was only when she saw his naked grin that she gave a little yelp of surprise. He had been a tall man, from feet to neck covered a long space. His head lay beside him. When she pushed back the leaves and layers of earth and debris, Mayup saw that he'd had large white teeth, all of them cracked or broken, long fingers and very big bones. All his clothes had rotted away except some threads of blue denim from his overalls. The buckles of his overalls had turned green. Mayup gazed around the spot with interest. Very near where she'd stepped into his head was a wild pink rose. As she picked it to add to her bundle, she noticed a raised mound, a ring, around the rose's root. It was the rotted, rotted remains of a noose, a bit of shredding plow line, now blending benignly into the soil. Around an overhanging limb of a great spreading oak clung another piece, frayed, rotted, bleached, and frazzled, barely there, but spinning relentlessly in the breeze. Maya laid down her flowers. Summer was over. All right, so um, uh, that's the story. Uh, and in the uh, next video, um, we'll go through and talk about um, what all these things mean. Um, also be sure, um, I've also posted in the folder some videos about lynching. Um, make sure you look at those as well.